Hi, I just want to take you on a quick tour through using Canvas to do some standards-based grading. First off, right now we are in the Learning Mastery Gradebook, um, which gives me a readout of how each of the students, which are actually our math department, are doing against particular standards. And I get you know, a color-coded deal scale over here of what it means. I can actually adjust per outcome what mastery really means. Um, and across the top, there's a little readout of how, how everyone's, how the whole class is doing uh, relative to each standard. Um, and if I hover over one, 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 of the, one of these, I can actually see a breakdown of how the class is doing in general. So I can see that, for example, we need to talk about uh, fit, fitting models to data some more. Um, if I click on an individual student, I can go in and, and see their learning mastery view. This is the view that they would see. And the standards are collapsed into the outcome groups. So I've got two groups, skills and content. Um, I can expand each one and see, see what's going on. Uh, if I hover over the little ellipsis here, it'll show me what, you know, how these various alignments have been going. And unfortunately for Scott, I see that he's trending downward here. That dotted green line is my mastery line that I kind of arbitrarily set at 1.75. I'm going to scroll a little bit here so we can see, see more of this. When I hover over this, it talks a little bit about how mastery is calculated right here. That... Um, it's done as a decaying average. We'll take a look in a little minute at how, what our choices are to do that. Um, but this basically just means that the most recent score is weighted most heavily. Um, but there is some, some uh, measure of, of, of impact fr from older scores. Uh, as we talk about the Learning Mastery Gradebook, it is not turned on by default. Um, it has to be enabled at the, at the, at the, at the account level. And within a course, if it's not, if they, if at the account level it's not set to fully on but just allowed, you do need to go into course settings under feature options and toggle on the Learning Mastery Gradebook for teachers to see it and the Student Learning Learn, Learning Mastery Gradebook for students to be able to see their summary view of it. As I do this, let's 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 imagine that I have just graded an assessment, and I would like to enter these scores into the Canvas gradebook. I may go I may go back to the main gradebook. And learning mastery, the learning mastery view is a summary of how how folks are doing against outcomes. But if I need to grade an individual assessment, I actually need to switch over to the grades gradebook. Uh, right now, you see I've got three assessments in there. We're, we're going to take a moment and work on grading assessment three, uh, which I have handily graded right here. Uh, we, I've, I've got a little spreadsheet that I, as I went through, each question was, was aligned to a particular standard. And as I marked up the kids' papers, I just noted how they, how, how they did. And I've got a little average over here that I'm going to enter. So for assessment three, which is the one we're grading, I'm going to go into the speed grader. And because I like to have a little bit more elbow room here, I'm going to grab the divider here and pull it out so I can actually see my rubric. I don't have any actual virtual version of this assignment. It's all on paper. And I'm going to view my rubric. I'm going to go in and just punch in those averages. So 1.5 for functions, 1 for strategies, 2 for fit, and 1.5 for graph. You'll see that if I hit one of the actual uh, uh, criteria values exactly. It'll actually light up that square. Otherwise, it will uh, it, 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 it will just let me enter the score. If I wanted to quickly enter one of these values, I just tap the square and there it is. Um, I've now enter, entered the grades. If I go back to the main grade book, I actually can't see anything because I, I made a choice right here that I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, but if I switch over to Learning Mastery, uh, the the grades should have updated. Let me give ourselves a little bit, little bit of elbow room here, so I can see that you know the uh, mastery chart is updated. If I go into individual view, I can see Dob Jacob's particular alignments or Alice's particular alignments have shifted. Um, let's go and create an assessment using this system and see 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 what that looks like because I think that will illuminate the choice I alluded to a second ago. Um, I'm going to go in, I'm going to 
go to assignments, and add a new assignment. I'm going to call this one assessment three because there is um, no four. We just did three because there is no poetry in my soul. And we'll make this do, I don't know, Friday. It doesn't really matter. This is all a demo. Save and publish. Once I've created the assessment, I can then connect a rubric to it. So I'm just going to click add rubric. And I could, if I wanted, if I, if I, if, if I, was uh, if I already had a rubric that, met, that, 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 that that was appropriate, I could go out and choose that rubric. I've seen I have rubrics from all of my previous assessments right here. Um, and I can just say, hey, I'd like to use the assessment one rubric again and say, yeah, make it so, click the name, bang, I've got that rubric. I could also, in doing this, say, you know, actually, I would like to make my own rubric for this. So if I, I edit this, I can rename it, and then um, I'm going to clear out the outcomes that are already in here so we can bring them in. The way rubrics in Canvas work is I can either add my own unique criteria right here, like, you know, handwriting, and then, you know, mark out each individual criteria for it right now it defaults to full versus no marks i can insert some you know some middle value sloppy but legible and i can assign my numerical values as i see fit i can also and this is where things are actually really useful say hey you know what i'm not going to create a separate outcomes for every every rubric i'm going to go in and i'm going to pull out of my my, my outcomes for this course, the particular outcomes that I'm assessing on this assessment. So I'm going to bring in functions and functional notation. Do I really want to bring it in? Yes, I do. And with this in place, I'm actually going to lose my handwriting criteria. I now have a rubric that is specific to this particular assessment. At the bottom, I'm asked to make a couple of choices right here. Essentially, the I'll write freeform comments choice says, I'm not going to see these boxes. I'm just going to have a number, and then there's going to be a box where I'll write a comment. I can always write a comment even if I don't, if, even if I don't tick this, so I tend not to tick it. There's a use this rubric for assignment grading, and this is actually what we were seeing earlier. Let's take a quick look at the gradebook a second. We see that for assessment one, they actually have scores, but for assessment two and three, they do not have scores, even though I have entered, en en entered uh, rubric information. And this is kind of a philosophical question. How do I want to generate their final grade based on their mastery of, 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 the, of these uh, standards? I could do it as, uh, you know, generate their, their final grade assessment by assessment based on how they scored against those standards. Um, so it's essentially a traditional grading scheme. I could also, and this is the choice I, I, I think might make the most sense, say, you know what, I'm not going to use this rubric for assignment grading. I'm not even going to enter a score for this assignment. I'm just going to mark the standards right here. And then at the end of, this, uh, end of the grading window, I will go in and use the outcome scores to generate the uh, the letter grade that I'll be I'll be turning in. So I'm going to leave use this rubric for assignment grading unchecked. And um, if I was feeling really aggressive about this, I could turn on and off the total points right there. So it really is just about like here are the standards and how you did on those standards. So question: These outcomes are cool. Where do they come from? In my course over on the left, I see that there is an outcomes section and I can go in and I can create nested outcome groups um, and within each outcome group I can have outcomes or you know even further nested outcome groups the outcomes are listed alphabetically so actually naming is probably more important than I've made it look right here yeah actually numbering them in the order that that that, that is meaningful to you would be it would be important I'm going to add a new uh, we'll say a new content outcome right here. I'm going to just flip over to our curriculum map right here. I'm going to add a linear linear programming um, outcome here. So I'm going to add a new linear program linear programming outcome. I'm just going to pop that in there for the name. 
I'm going to rename these these criter criterion ratings right here because we, we've been talking about the idea of proficiency being our, our top rating. They could be developing as a middle rating, and we'll say emerging if they are not yet developing. And I can make a choice here, you know, what does mastery look like and how do we calculate that? I could choose, you know, you have to you have to hit a particular score a certain number of times. You know, I'd like you to say mastery is at two and you need to hit that three times and I'll say, Oh yeah, sure, you've mastered that. Um I could say, let's just take the most recent score and it had better be a two. That's what mastery looks like if you did you know, last time I asked you, did you know how to do it? I can simply say, what, have they ever hit two? This I'm a little suspicious of, but it's an approach. Or I could go back to this decaying average, and this is perhaps the most complicated, but essentially it, it weights the most recent result of 65%, uh, and that's a default. I can adjust that. And all, average of all the other 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 other, other results is 35 percent. And then mastery is when they've crossed a particular line with that average, and we'll say 1.75 because that's what I've said for all of my other outcomes in here. And I just click save. And now linear programming is an outcome that I can use on my rubrics, and will actually be tracked in the mastery gradebook for both me and the kids. Um,